When the world is a little bit topsy-turvy, I like to begin with a good cup of tea. Don't you? I do. Oh. Hey there kittens. I'm not really sure what this video is going to be, but I do feel compelled to make it. So I'm just basically going to let my instinct take control. I'm going to flow into it and just see what comes out, what comes along and spend a bit of time with you guys, you know, because it's been a crazy few days. And I think, I think that's fair to say. I think that's fair. Yeah, that's a fair comment. I knew that whatever the outcome of the US presidential election, I was not going to be over the moon in any way. I accurately predicted that with the outcome being Donald Trump, I would definitely feel a lot more panicked and um, <laughs> that my response would have probably somewhat of a nihilistic flavour to it. Like, well, hey, if Donald Trump's the president of the USA, then why don't we all just do what the fuck we like? Like, why do we have any rules? Why do we have any laws? Like, um, everything is just on its head, you know? And that, that was definitely my initial reaction. I did feel like I was in the fucking twilight zone, 100%. Um, but I, but I want to be clear, there's no bone in my body that's pro-Hillary. Um, I think that part of the reason that Trump is now heading to the White House is that um, the liberal agenda was to present Hillary as the sane, sensible choice. Um, and actually, there is a hell of a lot wrong with her too, you know. Um, there's a hell of a lot wrong with Obama. There's, there's like, it's kind of, um, it was set up like that and I think that was dangerous. I think Hillary was seen as more of the same and I think Donald Trump was then seen by a lot of people who are scared or feel disenfranchised or don't know any better um, as the only option for change, the only way to shake things up. Um, and I have a lot of opinions, a lot of opinions about that and about like, um, you know, Hillary being selected as the candidate over Bernie Sanders and how things could have gone down differently. You know, I like to look at things subjunctively. That's not what this video is going to be about. But let me just be clear, you know, had Hillary Clinton have gotten into the White House, I definitely would have been, wouldn't have been over the moon either. I read a comment on Facebook the other day that said something like, I don't know how to tell my children when they sit down for breakfast in the morning that hatred now holds the highest office in the world. And um, that was a lot of what I felt, you know, a lot of what Donald Trump symbolises, a lot of his rhetoric, a lot of his comments. Um, they are, they're insidious, they're clearly fucking odious. And there may be a very small minority of people who watch my channel regularly who did vote for Trump or are supporters of Trump. Um, and obviously this video is, is not necessarily uh, designed to cater for you, but I think there's probably an even smaller minority of people who watch my videos on a regular basis who would be surprised to learn that like I'm not pro-Trump <laughs> and never was, <laughs> you know? So I don't think this video is gonna come as a surprise to anybody. There is so much confusion and bewilderment and anger and apathy and frustration and alienation in the psycho-spiritual community right now. Um, and it's been interesting for me to feel the dust settle inside my own psyche and figure out where the land lies now, you know, and what it is that I really want to do, how I want to choose my response to this. I'm going to start by reading the status update that I put on Facebook about this the other day, um, which for, for a lot of people that read my Facebook page regularly did seem to be some comfort during a, a really difficult time. So I'm going to start by reading that. I know that lots of people out there in the psycho-spiritual community are feeling disjointed, disempowered, confused and overwhelmed at the moment. I know that we're all going through our individual ups and downs and perhaps can't always be the beacons of strength and empathy to each other that we would like to be as we grapple with things in our own ways. I know that some people don't know where to turn, who it's safe to reach out to or what to say to comfort those who are feeling afraid. I just want to hold a hand out now to anyone who might happen upon this status and chance to read it during an uncertain moment. The truth is that your response to this outcome is an autonomous zone. No one else gets to vote on what you choose to do next. Your response to this is your sovereignty in action. You can and you must locate the sources of power within yourself and bring them into consciousness, into beingness, into the light. If you are jarred, scared, confused or angered, it means that you have deeply held ethics, intentions and beliefs. Find them now and ask them to lead you forward. If you believe in love, freedom, equality, compassion, acceptance and empathy, then those beliefs are now your sacred fuel. No one can stop you from being in the seat of your own power. What can you do to spread love? What can you do to create positive change? What will you do to stand in solidarity with those who truly need to feel that their place in this world is valid? How will you put your spiritual ideas into action? How will you begin by just doing your seemingly small but incredibly significant part? 
I know it's so hard to feel powerful right now, but you are. You can create a ripple in this dark water, and so can I, and so can anyone who is prepared to take the scary, holy step out of their confines of apathy and into the fire of their deepest vision for this planet. Let this be a rallying cry from the cosmos. I know where I've been slacking. I know where I could be more present. I know where my love is more needed. I know that I want to be a piece of positive change in this place. I am slowly beginning to raise my head and decide that I'm going to let these events drive me out of my hibernation and further into the good that I can do when I set my mind and soul to it. Let this pain inspire you. I'll leave the link to that Facebook post down below if you want to read it again at any point or share it, you can do. I was watching an interview that um, a guy from HuffPost did with uh, Gabby Bernstein. It was kind of like a 45 minute, you know, the dust has settled, let's really feel our feelings and anchor into our purpose kind of talk about the election results. In that interview, Gabby Bernstein said that her response to the result of the election was not a spiritual response. It was not, you know, she didn't instantly go to love and instantly go to inspired action and think about, you know, where she's best needed and what she can do and how she can be of service. And she was rageful. She was fucking angry um, as a woman, as a survivor of sexual violence, as somebody who believes in compassion and equality, as somebody who believes in spiritual and religious freedom. Um, you know, she she was fucking pissed off. And, and to me, that was the most helpful thing that she said, actually, was that she didn't have a spiritual response and that it was a loss. And it it's okay. It's okay to recognise it as a loss. Um, and like I said, you know, at the beginning of this video, I'm under no illusion about the two-party system in America. I'm under no illusion um, about what Democrats have been doing overseas, their foreign policy, the things that they're lying about, the money that they're embezzling, the corruption that they're neck deep in. I am no, no, I'm not under any illusion about that. I do not think Hillary is a paradigm of liberal virtue, not at all. Um, but when a guy that openly says racist and misogynistic and hateful things um, and clearly has no background in politics, no true understanding of how the political system works, um, is near totally fucking ignorant to things that even I have a decent working knowledge of, when that guy wins over Hillary, um, you know, it's, it's your instant response is not really going to be a spiritual one. And I think that that's the first thing that I'd like to say is that it's OK for us to hold space for ourselves and each other to have a response that may not, when you look at it objectively, be described accurately as useful, you know? The initial response, I guess it's useful to, to externalise the rage and the, the bewilderment and the anguish. Long term, it's not going to be useful. It's not going to be useful to drop anchor there, but I think it's really important to recognise that those responses tend to come first, before the dust settles and we think about what it is we can do and how we can allow ourselves to feel that inner call to action. For me, I would say probably took me about 48 hours to get my head together enough to think about what I wanted to do next. What was the thing that I wanted to do? How could I really um, kind of channel, channel the energy, channel the bewilderment? I'm very fortunate because I have um, like a platform online that I've built, which is a lot to do with reaching out to people and having dialogue with people and sharing ideas and providing comfort and providing inspiration. And so for me, that was a big part of what I considered to be my coping strategy, was just thinking, how can I be there for, um, for my tribe, for the people I hang out with online, my audience, my clients? And I did receive emails. I have had clients, um, you know, either scheduling extra sessions or rescheduling sessions that they had set in wake of the election results, just dealing with the response um, that they're having to the election results. I've had people messaging me, asking me to make a video or wondering what my thoughts are. And um, I've definitely experienced as I've been scrolling through Facebook and stuff and, and looking at some of the spiritual peeps that I follow, um, just a lot of bewilderment and a lot of discussion, a lot of dialogue about, um, about our emotions and what's happening within us as a result of this. For me, it was definitely nice to have that feeling of like, I can, I can do something for people, I can put something out into the world that will be useful. So I started to think about that and that was a big part of where my sense of centre came from. Um, was just basically how can I be of service to people who are feeling bewildered and overwhelmed and are kind of looking for things to inspire them or calm them down. The other thing that I allowed myself to think about quite a lot that I do 
tend to encourage myself to think about at times like this and I did it as well during the whole Brexit situation and a lot of the very hateful behaviour that came up during that time was I thought about my personal ethics, my beliefs, you know, and the way that I want to walk out into the world every single day, the vibe that I want to bring to it, the things that I really want to share with people and the energy, the vibration that I want to hold. And I thought about the fact that that's where my agency is. I think a lot of us are just feeling really, really fucking disempowered, like supremely powerless, powerless to change what is happening, strapped into this roller coaster of inexcusable weirdness at times, I felt, um, and powerless. And actually, that is an illusion. We all have agency. We all have the power to create a ripple in this dark water. And I've just started thinking about that. I started thinking about how I could be of service, you know? I started by texting my friends and making sure they were okay, making sure that I was creating a vibe of openness and availability in my friendship group. Um, you know, giving to the food bank, thinking about organisations that I can get involved with or join or learn more about, um, reading articles and reading think pieces and opening my mind up to different things, you know, taking the time to really sit with myself and nurture myself and care for myself in the process of all of this and get my brain oiled in a different way. Um, I've tried to look for the positive things. I've thought about how many cultural commentators and writers and things like that I've either overlooked or never discovered before. And as a result of being very interested in the selection and now reeling from the result, um, I've actually engaged with a lot of people's work and um, got a few new books on my book list. And that's been cool um, just from a personal perspective. And just really thinking about how I can carry the energy of helpfulness and acceptance and the, my belief in equality, just making people feel comfortable, making people feel included in any way that I possibly can and just trying to be kinder, you know, even just when I'm out in the street, just making sure that I engage with people and I give them eye contact and I just make everybody feel seen and heard and loved and just try and put that energy out into the world. And all of this has come as a direct result of me sitting down and thinking, what is my little piece of agency in this world right now? Where's my power? Where's my power at? <laughs> I need to focus on that, you know, and I've been focusing on that. And my hope is that more and more of you, as the days are going on, are being able to focus on that as well, to focus on what you can do for your community, what kind of energy you want to carry with you out into the world, and how you're not going to allow um, some of the incredibly potent fear that is clearly infiltrating all different areas of society right now. Um, turn you into somebody who's fearful, into somebody who rejects others, into somebody who, you know, is suspicious of others and insecure about others and wanting to snatch power and civil liberties from others. It's about knowing where your centre is and where you're coming from and not letting those things influence you to be other than what you know you are in your soul. There's so much work to do now and that's something that can actually help you to bring your A-game to every new day. And another thing that I was thinking about in the last sort of like 48 hours or so is shadow work and self-love as a daily practice and digging deep and really anchoring into self-discovery and self-awareness and self-mastery. These things that we do, that we talk about with each other, um, you know, the courses that we pay for, the videos and the audio files that we listen to, the books that we read, these concepts that we have dialogue about. Um, all of that isn't for nothing, all of that isn't for vanity, it's not a fucking caprice. You do it as training for this bullshit. <laughs> this is what you've been training for, you know? And I know some of you watching this video have been training for it a hell of a lot longer than me, you know? I know people watch me that have been meditating for like upwards of 30 years. I know people watch me that have done upwards of 30 ayahuasca ceremonies deep in the jungle with a, you know, a really experienced shaman. I know people have done all kinds of incredible things, you know, people have been forging their own paths, weaving their own practices, learning so much about themselves and about transpersonal experience and how to plug themselves in and how to turn this shit up now on planet in this lifetime. I know activists watch me, people that literally have thrown their bodies over mother nature uh, in, in the service of her greatness. I know that there's amazing people out there that watch me, people that have overcome all kinds of mental health difficulties and triumphed over dark, dark nights of the fucking soul. Uh, you've done your work, you're doing your work. You're coming to your work and this is what it's for. This is where the training wheels come off. Because really, 
we are looking at shadow we're looking at shadow unfolding now that's what i truly believe you know i truly believe that the way that Jung was watching the rise of Hitler and being like, yeah, <laughs> guys, <clears throat> we need to look within because <laughs> what we don't want to see within ourselves is manifesting outwardly. And it's not great. It's not great. Um, <laughs> that's how I feel right now. And I feel like that that's the perfect time then. That's the perfect time to come at this with everything that I've tried to learn, all the strength that I've tried to develop. Now's the time for you to show yourself what you can do. Show your loved ones what you can do. This is the challenge, this is the challenge almost that you've been training for, that you've been preparing for. If you feel bewildered, if you feel uncertain, if you feel like you don't know where to start, start with that realisation. You know, I really feel like, obviously I'm, I, I run a YouTube channel, it's not an invite only situation, anybody can show up and watch my videos and there are lots of different kinds of people that do watch my videos. I'm really grateful for that but I feel like the vast majority of people that watch my videos are people who've been doing some fucking work on themselves, you know, for some length of time or another. And if you're watching this and you know that you've been doing that work and you've been showing up, you've been trying to love yourself more and, you know, really just dive into your darkness and bring it into integration if you have been reading about how to live life on a deeper level how to experience things with more meaning how to let go of your fear how to overcome depression if you've been doing any of that shit if you've been meditating if you've been learning tarot if you've been you know in the process of any spiritual discipline just know that you've been training you know you've been you've been preparing for this you've been getting in shape for this and um and that's a really good starting point i think that's somewhere that i was happy to start and something that i thought about a lot um and you know that that initial reaction like gabby bernstein said you know you, we've got to have room for that shit of course you know you've got to have a meltdown <laughs> you've got to go and hit a punch bag <laughs> you've got to get that extra session with a the therapist you've got to let it go <laughs> um you know you've got to let it out but i really feel like after that come home to this sense that um you've got this you've got this your agency is somewhere it's somewhere within your grasp it's somewhere within your reach you do not have the agency to turn this around and go back but you do have the agency to make a difference now that it's happening you do have that agency you do have that power you can make somebody feel better you can switch up the vibration in a room you can teach somebody a chant or a mantra or a prayer that you use that helps you you can pass one of your loved ones a crystal and say you know what i know you don't believe in this shit but i want you to have this it's a master communication stone and it will help you to express what you want to express or you know it's a it's a stone for creativity and i think it wants to belong to you you can take someone a coffee you can ask somebody if they want to go for a walk you can deliver some warm clothes to a homeless shelter you can offer to walk someone's dog if they're feeling a bit frail or sad or under the weather. Figure out where you can put a bit of your time, where you can give a bit of your money. Figure out what's going on that you agree with, that you think is good and positive, that you want to get involved in. Think about those things that you were planning on doing for ages that you thought would be a really good idea, that you kind of wanted to do, but you always convinced yourself you didn't have time or you weren't good enough or there'd be a better moment to do it. Um, I'd say the moment is now, wouldn't you? <laughs> because after being slapped on one cheek with Brexit and now being slapped on the other one with this I'd say the time is definitely fucking now you know <laughs> any anything you want to do to bring that positivity and to make that change do it now the beautiful thing is that that is such a good use of our energy <sighs> we have to have that ungraceful unmanageable reaction where we do feel rage and we do feel bewilderment and we do feel frustration. But that incredible ball of holy electric life force, you know, that comes out of us in that in that display of rage or that externalization of fear and anguish, that is raw, that is chi, that is off the fucking chain. We can do something with that. We can take that, we can harness it, we can redirect it into an avenue where it actually will do something it will be planted like a seed and it will grow it will make other things happen it will be a catalyst it will be a part of the alchemy that we need to celebrate and bring into being this now so hold space for your anger hold space for your raw terror and then know that that stuff is power and you can shape that power according to your beliefs and according to the needs of yourself and those around you 
So for me, it was like saying, okay, this is my time to break down. This is my time to flip out and believe me, okay? It was six o'clock in the morning um, and I was going through Facebook and I realized things were going the way they were going and I shit you not, I had a panic attack um, for the first time in years. I'm just gonna be honest, I did, I had a panic attack. I started to hyperventilate. Uh, it was, it was, it was, it, shit got real, you know? <laughs> it was legit, so that's all I'm gonna say. Um, and it was, it was a difficult, it was a difficult moment for me and I let that happen, I rode that out. But there's a lot of power in that, that raw reaction comes from a place of deep belief and deep intention and deep love and that is some pure, real, potent, grade A, uncut shit. That is beautiful. We need to learn how to use it. We need to channel it. We need to harness it. And when we harness it and take it away from screaming judgments and obscenities and feeling resentful and feeling alienated from our fellow human beings and feeling rageful and shutting down and crying and sobbing and doing things that we know are bad for us because we don't know what else to do. When we take that power away from that cycle and we put it into what is the next right action? Who can I help? Where can I put this energy? Who needs me? Where are people mobilizing? What can I do to show somebody that I care, that they are heard, that their life is fucking valid, that their life has meaning? That is alchemy, that's spiritual alchemy, and you can do that, you have the power to do that. Every single moment of the day is another moment to choose alchemy, to choose to be the master of that change. I think I'll come back and do another video later because um, this is my brand new video camera and it's not telling me how long I've been filming for because I didn't remember to kind of go into the settings and put that capability on. So I'm not sure how long I've been filming for. I'm not sure how long I've got left on the camera. Um, I definitely want to pull some cards. I definitely want to do a tea and tarot episode pertaining to using our power, finding our sense of personal agency. So I'll be back. I'll be back. I have a lot to say. I want to sit with you guys for a lot longer. I want to feel your presence so much. I want to read your comments so much. And I'm sending so much love to you. Come and hang out with me on Facebook if you want to. Come and hang out with me on Twitter. Um, if you are looking for journal prompts, if you are big on writing to externalise the emotions that you're going through, I have just literally published 50 journal prompts which were specifically designed as a response to this complete clusterfuck and maybe you want to use some of them to help you to explore your feelings and you know deal with your fears and come to a point of inspired action so I'll leave the link for the 50 journal prompts below, please check that out. Um, if you want to book a spiritual counselling session with me, if you want to have a chat with me, if you want to have a cup of tea with me, I'm available to clients as always. Go to kellyannemaddox.com and click on the work with me tab. I'll leave the link below for the spiritual counselling sessions specifically. If you've never spoken to me before, never worked with me before and you think now might be a good time, I'm ready. I do hour long sessions and 90 minute long sessions. So come and see me if that's something that you want to do, if that's something you would like to invest in, then I'm here. And I'm going to see you out with a chant. It's my fucking favourite. If you don't chant and you're feeling stressed, you should chant. It's a very good use of time. Very good use of time and energy. Okay. Let's raise this motherfucker up to the roof. Om. I bow to the teacher that lives inside me and we have to do that now that's the fucking plan okay so we'll reconvene here sooner rather than later I'll be back you know where to find me if you need me much much love pickles and blessed be <laughs>